Hi, this is Mr. Curtis, and today what we're going to be talking about is blood and blood typing. Now, I've started off with this photo, picture, because um, I think a lot of us have a view of blood that is slightly different than how scientists might look at it. We tend to look at blood as this horrible, nasty stuff that, oh my gosh, we don't want to see it and it's gross and it's disgusting and you know anytime that uh, we come across blood we tend to you know think oh my gosh this is wrong or this is not right well you know blood really is a tissue and it's made of a group of cells working together to perform a function and if you look at this microscope uh, picture here we can see kind of all kinds of different cells in here so here we've got uh, red blood cells that are stained pink and then these things here those are white blood cells which have been stained purple and each of them has its own function and does some very important jobs for our body. Here's another view of blood cells. Um, these are taken with an electron microscope and they look very much like donuts. I mean, they have kind of a little hole in the middle. And as we talked about before, form follows function. So you have these big, round cells that can travel easily through blood vessels without getting stuck. Form follows function. Now let's talk a little bit about the history of blood and blood typing. And we go back quite a few years and what people used to do is something called bloodletting. So if you got sick, they literally would take blood out of your body. They thought if you had a poison, we'll just let the blood out and the blood will bring the poison out with it. Well, as you can imagine, that was a, an issue because sometimes people took out too much blood and it made them sicker, weaker, and sometimes they died. One of the more famous examples is this. George Washington. The uh, story goes that he got pneumonia and they let out some of his blood and unfortunately let out too much blood and it made him sicker and he ended up dying. We move on to James Blundell and he was the first to perform a successful transfusion. And What he did was he took blood from a husband to give it to his wife who had just given birth who had lost a lot of blood. And we'll talk more about that story in class, but as it turned out, it, it worked. It saved the wife's life. Unfortunately, he started to do more blood transfusions and it ended up killing people and he got this horrible reputation. Well, as we now know, he was giving the wrong type of blood to people and um, that was killing him. So along comes this guy, Karl Lahnsteiner, and he discovered that there were different types of blood. There are actually three different alleles that we carry for blood typing, and they are the A allele, the B allele, and the O allele, which means that you do not produce a blood typing protein. So each of us carries a combination of one of those three alleles. Now, let's look at the combinations we can get with those three alleles. Those are called genotypes. Remember what that is? That's the letter combinations. So if we have somebody who carries an A and an A, or an A and an O allele, that will give you type A blood. If you have a B and a B, or a B and an O allele, that will give you B blood. If you carry an O and an O allele, well, that's only going to give you O blood. And lastly, if you carry an A and a B allele, that will give you AB blood. Now, what I have here is a breakdown of different blood types found in different groups of people. So, for example, this first line here, we have the population of white Americans. 41% of white people have A blood, 45% have O blood, and so on. 
Now, as you go down through this list, you can see there's quite a variation of things. Does this mean that one blood type is better than another? No. And we'll talk about um, later on why this information could be valuable. In fact, that could be something to write down in your summary or in your briefs. Why do you think, or how do you think, this kind of information could be valuable to somebody in a hospital, for example? We've heard of transfusions before, and that is to give somebody's blood to somebody else. However, uh, transfusions can be sometimes given when the blood types are not the same. So if somebody has A blood, we really would like to give them A blood as well. However, you don't always have to do it. And the rule of thumb is this. As long as you don't give the recipient, the person getting the blood, a new protein, the transfusion can be done. So let's take these examples. If we have the donor, somebody giving the blood is A, and the person getting the blood is AB, are we, is this person going to be okay? Well, let's, let's look at this. You've got A protein here, you've got B protein here, and you've got A protein here as well. Are you giving the recipient, the person getting the blood, something new? No, so this person will be okay. What about if the donor was B, and again, the recipient was AB. Are we giving them anything new? No, they'll be fine as well because we're not giving a new protein. Now, what if the person giving the blood had O and the person getting the blood had AB? Would this be okay? Well, in this case, the answer is still, yeah, they'll be fine. Why? Because remember, O means no blood typing protein. Yeah, there's proteins in the blood, but it's no blood typing protein. So are we giving them something new? No, we're giving them nothing new, so they'll be just fine. Now, let's change things a little bit. I am type O blood, and what if somebody were to give me A? Well, now we're giving them, me, something that I don't have. And unfortunately, that's not going to help me very much. That would kill me. What if I were to receive B blood? Same thing. I'd be pushing up daisies really, really quickly. And lastly, what if I got O blood? Well, then I would be fine. This is why type O blood is called the universal donor. You can give it to anyone. And type AB blood is called the universal recipient. You can get that blood from anyone. You'll notice that we haven't talked yet about the positive and negative portion of, of blood typing. So you've heard of things like O positive blood or B negative blood, something like that. We'll get to the positive and negative at the end of our lecture today. Now, one of the fun things, or one of the good things I should say, about blood typing is you can oftentimes predict what the blood type is going to be for the kids. So let's say mom has O blood and dad has O blood. Well, what are the kids going to be? Now remember that O really means two O's being carried. So what is the kid going to have? Well, since mom has only O's and dad has only O's, there's only one thing the kid can have. The kid can only get O blood. This is the case with uh, my children. My wife has O, I have O, all our kids have O. What if mom has B and dad has O? What could you get there? Again, now this B might have an O there, and this we know has to have an O there. Now, if you get stuck, go do a little Punnett square. And put them together. What combinations would we get here? So that tells us what the blood types will be. We know that if you have mom is B and dad is O, we could have kids that are B blood, and we could have kids that are O blood. What if mom is AB and dad is AB? What combinations could you get? Again, do a little Punnett square if you want. Well, let's see, we could get an A and an A, which would be A blood. 
we could get an A and a B, that would be AB blood. We could get two Bs, BB, that would be B blood. Could we get O blood? No, we cannot. Anytime one parent is AB, you cannot have an O kid. What if mom is A and dad is B? Again, let's pretend that mom is carrying an O and dad is carrying an O. And let's do a little Punnett square up here since we're running out of room. Well, we could get what combinations? We could have an A and a B. That would be AB blood. We could have a B and an O, which would be B blood. We could have an A and an O. That's A blood. And we could have two O's. Well, that's O blood. So if mom is A and dad is B, the kids could end up and have all four of the blood types. What if mom is AB and dad is O? Well now, let's do this one in our head and see if we don't have to use a Punnett square. Could we get an AB? No, because we have to have an A and a B. Dad here, he's only giving O's to his kids, so we could not have an AB. So we could have an AO, which is A blood. We could have a B and an O, that's B blood. Could we get O blood for the kids? No. So this is an interesting case because mom and dad end up and have blood types completely different from the kids, even though it's still inherited. Now, what about this? What if mom is A and dad is O and the kid ended up having B blood? This happened to me in a blood test my first year in California. This very thing. And we're going to talk about this one in class. And I want to see if you can come up with a reason why this happened. So one of the things I want you to do in your notes today, write down how this could have happened. Now, I want to spend a little bit of time, even though we've finished up the regular part. This is a little addition and extension activity. Um, you won't see this on any of our regular tests and quizzes, but uh, I wanted to talk to you about the other part of our um, blood typing, and that is the RH factor, which is named for a rhesus monkey. I think I'm spelling it correctly. But that's the positive and negative part of our blood typing. Now, after the four blood types came out, the A, B, O, and ABs, then they found that there was another protein in our blood that we needed to be taking account of because if you had A blood, there still were some times where people were getting sick if you gave them A blood and another kind of A blood, and that's the positive and negative. If we look at the genotypes here for um, positive and negative, if you have positive as your blood type, that means you are either carrying a plus and a plus or a plus and a minus. If you are negative, the only thing you can be carrying is a minus and a minus. So the plus can either be purebred or it can be hybrid. And the negative is recessive. Let's look at a couple examples here of what we can do. I am O negative. That's the blood type that I have, which means I have the genotype of O and O, but then I also have negative negative. Those are the alleles that I carry. My wife, she is O positive, which means she's O and O. She, we don't know what her um, genotype is for the plus minus. She could have plus plus or she could have plus minus. Now we do know that one of my kids is also O neg. One of my kids is O neg. That should tell you what my wife's uh, genotype is. There's only one thing she can be. If my kid is also 0, 0 and then negative, negative, there's only one genotype that they can have. Let's see if you can figure that one out. 
Okay, so this wraps up our talk today about blood types. Make sure that you add something to the summary, and also I've given you lots of opportunities to add things to the briefs. And we will see you next time.